What's going on everybody? Welcome back to part three of the Timber Frame Pergola Project. Today, we're gonna get the rest of the framing done and the majority of the construction completed for the Timber Frame Pergola Project. Come check it out. Okay, so our concrete set up overnight, the all thread bolts are stuck in there really good. We got here this morning, we put both the bucket brackets on, cinched them down, and got them all nice and level. We just laid the sill plates out of pressure treated wood that's gonna comprise the construction for the stone column that's going here. We're gonna start cutting the joinery on our, on our cedar beams so we can get our verticals put up, then we'll put the ridge piece on. All right, so in part one, if you didn't see it, go check it out. In part one, we milled all of the cedar logs to get all the material that we need for this timber frame pergola project. What we're gonna do is on our verticals, we're gonna cut a tenon for a mortise and tenon joint to support the upper beam. So on our beam here, right at the top, I have marked out five and a half inches down because that's the full dimension of the beam. I'm gonna mark out what size our tenon is gonna be. I'm gonna rough it in with the circular saw, do the rest by hand, and then we'll cut the mortise on the, on, the, on the ridge beam here in just a second after we get both the verticals leveled and anchored in. Alrighty, so we just got our joint roughed out with the circular saw, cutting just the hips of this joint here. What I'm doing is I'm just marking out the left and right side of these tenons so that we can cut it with our handsaw. The trick with the Japanese handsaws is really just allowing the saw to do all of the work for you here. Japanese hand saws are incredibly brilliant because they cut on the pull and not on the push. American and European hand saws would cut on the push and what you would get is the blade would really want to bind on you as it was under pressure, not allowing for a very clean cut. All right, so we just cut the short sides off of the end this tenon. Now we're going to cut the long side and we'll be ready to get this in place over there. All right, so we're just marking out the rest of our piece right here. Those are going to be the sides we cut off. Again, back to the hand saw just to cut these guys. Like I said just before, on the circular saw, we cut the shoulders to make a nice clean cut all the way around. It just makes life a little bit easier. And then we cut to it so those pieces just fall away. Any fine tuning that we need to do on this, we'll do with our timber framing chisel. Alrighty, so we just got this tenon roughed in with our handsaw. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our timber frame chisel. If you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you go check out the timber frame chisel restoration build. We'll post a link to it right up here and we're gonna use it just to pare down this side of the tenon here to make sure we get it down to the right size. Again, we're looking for one and three quarter inches of thickness. So we're just gonna bring this down just a bit more. As you can see, the timber frame chisel just glides through the cedar super nicely. One key thing for fitting up mortise and tenon joints, especially when they're big, is just knock the edge off. If you have a big square edge, it's hard to fit into a, uh, the actual mortise. So if you just knock the edges off, kind of right at that 45, it helps you just slide right into the spot where it's gonna fit. You just use that blade, just go across, just get nice 45 cut off. We're just gonna pare this down just a little bit more so it's nice and flat. We're gonna also just rotate it one more time. 
and get it right on this top side here. As you can see, this thing is just so sharp. It's just bringing ribbons straight off this cedar here. So that looks pretty good to me. Our final dimension for our vertical height is gonna be 74 inches from the bottom of the post to the underside of the ridge beam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this out right now. It's 74 inches. Again, because that tenon is going through the beam, we're gonna make sure we measure off of that shoulder of the joint, 74 inches. We're gonna grab our Square. And just mark that all the way around. We're gonna have to take a few passes on this thing to get all the way through it with our circular saw. So getting the line all the way around is gonna help us make sure we're nice and square through the whole thing. I'm gonna go back to the handsaw, just cut that last little bit hanging on that our circular saw couldn't get through. And there it is. Nice flush cut on the bottom. So, our first beam is done. We're gonna go set this in our bucket bracket here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a couple screws in here to hold the vertical so we know it's not gonna fall over. And the key here is gonna be getting us to as close to vertical as we possibly can. So hang on to that there. For those of you who don't know, this is Ralph, my dad. He's here out on the coast today working with me. It uh, is really nice to have a second person, especially when we're lifting up big beams. He's usually in the shop with us most days as well. What's nice about these bucket brackets is they have a one inch plate underneath them, which keeps the cedar off of the concrete. This just helps for the life of the beam, making sure it's not touching something that's gonna be wet or condensate all the time. It's just gonna prevent rot, make the beam last a lot longer here. Okay. Because we have a slope in this hill here, this back beam is gonna have to be shorter than the front beam. That's why we're laying the level right across the seat or the shoulder of this joint to make sure when we cut this next piece, it matches up exactly the same way. All right, so we just cut our last vertical. We'll see how it fits up here. Alrighty, so there are our two verticals. This already is getting super exciting with how it's coming out. I think it looks absolutely epic. We're level all the way across on the shoulders of the tenons here. And we look really good going straight down the middle of this island right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ridge beam. We're gonna lay it up here where it's gonna be left to right on its side. We're gonna mark out where we're gonna cut our mortises. We're gonna chisel those out, set that thing on top here in just a few minutes. All right, so this is gonna be our ridge piece here. You saw in part two, where we cut the peak onto the ridge beam. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this thing up on top so we can mark out the tenons. Alright, so we just laid out our ridge beam on the top of our two verticals. We laid it on its side like you saw, just so we could mark out where the tenons are going to be cut on the beam. Everything's level over there, both left to right, front to back, and on the tops of the shoulders of the tenon. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a Forstner bit, which just cuts a circle out of the wood, and it augers it out while it's cutting, which allows for a really clean cut and allows us to not have to use what's called a hole saw, which basically cuts, you know, a plug out of the wood, but stops when it hits the back. So the Forstner bits are really handy when cutting joinery like this, because we cut our tenon to one and three quarters, which is the width of this Forstner bit. So we're just drilling the Forstner bit hole back through from the top side, just to meet it in the middle. That helps us for two reasons. It eliminates the chance for tear out if we were to drill all the way through from the bottom out the top. When you drill all the way through and it gets to that point where it gets really thin, a lot of times, especially on a soft wood like cedar, it's gonna blast out what's called tear out on the top side of the joint. Also, we don't have enough length to get all the way through the whole beam, so drilling from both sides kind of helps us on, on both of those fronts. All right, so we just drilled our holes all the way through to meet the ones we started from the bottom side. So now we got a lot less material to chisel away. So as you can see, we got these two holes cut all the way through. So now what we have to do is we got to bring this line and square out this void here. We should be just about perfect for our tenons over there sitting up on the tops of the beams. So we'll get this thing chiseled out, squared out, and hopefully she fits. All right, so we just finished cutting out pretty much the square mortises that our tenons are gonna go into. This timber framing chisel, this is really like the first time we've gotten to use it in a real application on larger beams. It's just absolutely slicing right through end grain, going cross grain, everything. It's super, super nice. So again, as you saw, we drilled two holes with the Forstner bit. That way we had a lot less wood to remove with the chisel. We got nice square openings. We're gonna go test fit this, see if it works. Hopefully it fits without too much trouble. Try to bang it down, get this thing on top of those posts. All right, so we just got the ridge beam down onto the verticals. It was nice and tight, so that joint's gonna stick really good with a lot of pressure. What we're gonna do now is in pressure treated lumber, we're gonna build the substructure for the stonework that's gonna be going basically underneath the gate code box over to this edge and then just to the front of this beam. That's gonna be all pressure treated wood. We're gonna cover it with Dura Rock and then we're gonna do the stonework for the piece. So we're gonna get these things bolted together. Usually in timber framing, we would use like a hardwood dowel that we'd pound all the way through. What we'd like to do is do that. However, I wanna make sure that if anything were to happen, either a tree limb fell on this, 
someone you know clipped it by some chance pulling a trailer through that we could take a lag bolt out pop the piece off and replace it so we're going to get these things bolted together keep on going on the rest of the construction here all righty so our column is going to have a two inch inward taper on either side coming up the front face and from the front to the back we have to account for the thickness of our capstone which is going to be about two inches we also have to account for the thickness of our dura rock which is going to be a quarter inch and then we have to account for the thin set that we're going to use so all in all we need to come just about four inches short of where the top of our finished surface is going to be to start our framing here we have to make our capstone makes it underneath the or the, the bottom rather of the gate code box so we're going to take a measurement off that drop it down and that's where our framing is going to start here all right so we just got our cross pieces anchored in place and cut at the angle that we're going to have to match from the top to the bottom to have that flare to go down to the curb down here what we're going to do is now we're going to cut a, another pressure treated two by four we're going to slap it on the side and what's going to be nice is we're going to be we're going to be able to anchor from this top piece on its face down to the bottom of the perimeter of what we're going to frame the rest of this out as so we're going to take a few more measurements just keep on framing Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're, now we're gonna now start processing all of that lap two by eight roofing. Because of the stagger, we're gonna have a one inch overlap on the top pieces of the either side of the lower roof pieces. So really the two by eights are gonna be marked out as two by six for the purpose of figuring out how many we need because of that overlap spacing. We just got the measurement we need from the ridge peak to hang out level or rather flush with the front of the gate code box. So we're gonna start cutting those pieces, get them up on here. Alrighty, so we got one of the two by eights that we milled the other day out here on the chop saw. Because we put a 25 degree pitch on that center ridge beam, we're gonna cut this lap at 40 degrees so it matches the roof pitch angle. And what'll happen is you'll see it, what we did with the mock-up in part two, is that angle will allow the roof piece to come up level to the roof ridge and allow us to put another two by eight over on top of it with the same angle to tie it all in together and look you know super clean all the way down the line so we're going to cut a whole string of these 14 and a half inch pieces with the 40 degree bevel on there and then we'll get them up on there All right, so what we're doing on this first piece here, which is gonna be the front edge of the roof, is I'm just gonna cut a tapered angle on this first piece of roofing, just so it looks a little bit better, like it's not just square and sticking out of there. I'm gonna rip this down real fast. We'll put that whole first course of roofing up. All right, so we got that first side and the first course done. Now what we're gonna do is cut the same exact pieces, 
just a couple inches longer so that it laps over the angle of the other side. Now, when we put the second course that goes up on top like that, we'll stagger the angles so they go crisscross and lock each other in place. As you can see, we got our top course of roofing going on right now. The pergola is taking shape. We're literally just gonna cut the rest of the top course, get these pieces anchored in, do a little bit more framing of the pressure treated, and we're pretty much done for the day here shortly. So we're gonna keep cutting, keep getting these things tagged on here. This thing is, this thing's turned out really, really nice. The construction on the timber frame pergola is pretty much done. Well, not entirely. We gotta do a little bit more pressure treated two by four framing down below for the substructure for the stone wall. However, the timber framing is done. The lap roofing is done. You guys, part one, we milled this cedar from raw logs. Part two, we did a little bit of site prep, poured concrete. Part three, we put this whole thing together. Just you wait, next week we're coming out with part four where we do the final stonework and finishing of the whole pergola project. If you guys learned anything or were inspired by anything you guys saw here today, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one. Oh,